This video is sponsored by Aura. Sasha Samsudin was a beautiful young woman who was taken from this world far too soon when she was brutally attacked in her apartment in October of 2015. Worse yet, she was murdered by someone who swore to protect her. Sasha Samsudin returned to her apartment complex after a long night out. She was drunk and confused. In her altered state, she was unable to fend off her attacker, leaving her vulnerable to someone that she'd previously trusted with her life. The attack began and ended in under an hour, but the pain and heartache that was caused by this monster will last for years. Sasha Samsudin was a loving young woman who was born in New York. From a young age, she always aspired to help others. Her parents described her as one of the most caring people they'd ever known, and as she grew up, this kindness and loving curiosity didn't fade. Though she may have been born in New York, Sasha often claimed Florida as her home state, as she didn't live in New York for too terribly long before her family moved to Orlando when she was quite young. Sasha loved all the things that Orlando had to offer, and set up her home base here after graduating from the University of Florida. I couldn't seem to pin down what she majored in while attending college, but after she graduated, she quickly got to work on what she expected to be a career path that she would follow for the rest of her life. Dedicated to helping others, Sasha made the decision to begin working in the realty industry, helping people to find apartments in the Orlando area. She didn't end up becoming a full-fledged realtor, though. Instead, she felt that her skills made her better suited to work behind the scenes, often helping out with her partner's social media pages online and directing potential clients to the people that would be able to help them the most. In fact, much of the work that Sasha conducted wasn't even paid. She did a lot of it for free, helping out the Orlando-based charity Apartment Association of Greater Orlando. Sasha considered herself to be the cupid of apartment hunting, helping people find the perfect location for their lives to take place or referring them to someone who could make their dreams a reality. She also contributed to 407apartments.com as well as an education firm known as Pearson. Sasha truly was an all-around great person who wanted nothing more than to make the people around her as happy as possible. Unfortunately, Sasha spent her days and nights helping those around her, but there was no one there to help her when she needed it the most. By 2015, Sasha had moved to her permanent home, located in the Uptown Place condominiums. These condos were truly exceptional. I'll admit, I haven't seen many condos or apartments in my life. I'm not interested in living quite so close to other people, but Sasha's condos were absolutely incredible. The building appears to have been a five-story complex with a six-floor balcony that would overlook the common area that was decorated with giant palm trees and a stunning swimming pool that was free to use for all of the residents there. The place was built like something out of a fairy tale storybook, and to top this off, the building was outfitted with state of the art security systems on every floor, every window, and every doorway. This place was locked down like Fort Knox, being covered in 24-7 surveillance cameras. The building even had its own security team who monitored the complex all hours of the day, with each door having a unique key code or key card that could only be accessed by authorized personnel. But even the most advanced security systems have their flaws. I've personally been the victim of theft more than once in my life after my information was stolen by online hackers. Several of my family members have been in the same boat, but things don't have to be this way. For today's video, I teamed up with Aura, an industry leader in cybersecurity. Americans lose more than $56 billion per year to identity theft, and someone becomes a victim of identity theft every 14 seconds, with more than 33% of Americans having their identity stolen at some point in their lives. And if you're active on social media, you're at least 30% more likely to have your identity stolen. With Aura, you can put a stop to this, or at the very least, catch the thieves the moment they begin their crimes. Aura offers a whole life security suite to make sure you're protected no matter what you're doing or where you are. They can help monitor your financial records and verify any suspicious activity with you. And they also offer full-fledged identity theft protection with a $1 million insurance policy if your ID ever gets stolen while it's under Aura's supervision. To top this off, they even offer antivirus and VPN access for members, meaning your internet activity will be virtually invisible to potential hackers. 
But to top all of this off, I'm sure all of us are sick of getting those fake calls or robocalls on our cell phones, and Aura can help remediate this too with their new robocall protection program. Aura is a service that my family and I personally use, and I'd love for you guys to check it out as well. You can use the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to get set up with a 14-day free trial, just to let you see all the bells and whistles that Aura can offer. I definitely recommend at least giving the free trial a go because if you decide it's not for you, you haven't lost anything. Worst case scenario, you learn a thing or two along the way about being more secure with your info. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. It was October 17th, 2015. Sasha had been spending the evening out with her group of friends, as she often did on the weekends. On this particular weekend, the group had been drinking at an Orlando bar known as the Attic Nightclub. At some point during the evening, Sasha had made plans with one of her friends, Anthony Roper, to meet up the following morning for breakfast. The two had known each other for quite a while, so Anthony thought it was very unusual when Sasha didn't make it to their breakfast spot the following morning. Sasha was known for being super active on social media. After all, it was her job to be active online, as she would need to be in constant contact with her clients. But since the evening of the 17th, her online accounts have been whisper silent, and no one was able to get in touch with her. In fact, several of her friends mentioned unseen texts, calls, and instant messages with Sasha that day. It was later that day that Anthony and a couple of friends decided that they needed to go to Sasha's apartment and make sure that she was okay. After all, they'd been out quite late the evening before, so they were worried that she might have gotten sick somehow and wasn't able to get to her phone. When they arrived at her condo, things got even worse. As they passed by Sasha's car, they noticed that a gift had been left in the passenger seat. Sasha had mentioned this gift the day before and talked about how she needed to drop it off at a baby shower that day. By the time the friends had arrived, the baby shower had already come and gone. But for some strange reason, Sasha never attended the shower. The friends made their way into the condo and proceeded to head towards Sasha's apartment. They knocked on her door, but she never answered. After trying a few more times and still getting no response, Anthony decided it was time to call the police. Police officers arrived a short while later and made their way into Sasha's apartment. As soon as they stepped through the door, the officers were choked by an incredibly strong bleach odor. Luckily, her friends were not permitted to enter the apartment because moments later, the officers encountered a chilling crime scene. When officers found Sasha, she was lying on her bed wrapped in a blanket and partially clothed. Her shirt had been ripped open and her pants were missing. At this point, it was clear to officers what had happened here. The crimes that had occurred in the condo were very straightforward, but there was one thing that didn't make sense. Sasha's apartment had been locked when the officers arrived and there was no sign of forced entry. Even the windows had been locked and there was no evidence that anyone had been inside the apartment aside from Sasha. That is, until the investigators made their way to the restroom. When they entered the restroom, they noticed that the toilet seat had been lifted, something that was very strange considering Sasha lived there alone. They also noticed large shoe prints on the floor, prints that were much too large to have been any shoes that Sasha would have worn. By this point, officers realized what had taken place. Somehow, a male had gotten into Sasha's condo that day, taken advantage of her, murdered her, then attempted to clean the crime scene with bleach, as was evidenced by the nauseating odor that remained in the condo. Fortunately for police, the suspect did a terrible job cleaning things up and left behind mountains of evidence for them to collect. For starters, the criminal had left the bathroom toilet seat up and left fingerprints under the lid. The shoe prints were also documented and taken as evidence. Sasha's body was soon taken to the coroner's office for a forensic analysis, with the coroner being able to find trace amounts of male DNA all over her body. The investigation also proved that Sasha had been severely beaten and was ultimately strangled before the criminal left the apartment. When police began investigating the crime, the first place they turned was to the security team who monitored the building. From here, they immediately ran into problems. 
The security footage from that night wasn't readily available, so they weren't able to review who had last been seen with Sasha. They were able to find out which security guard had been on duty that night, but he wasn't much help with the investigation. They questioned Stephen Duxbury, who'd been tasked with monitoring everyone entering and exiting the building that evening. Stephen reported that he hadn't seen anything unusual that night, nor did he allow anyone in or out that evening without an ID, except for Sasha. Police were able to backtrack Sasha's steps that evening and realized that she'd been picked up by two young women late that night or early that morning. The two women had been riding in an Uber when they passed by Sasha as she was walking down the street, clearly drunk and in need of some help. They asked Sasha if she wanted a ride and they more or less wouldn't take no for an answer. Sasha got into the car with them and they rode with her to her condo, letting her out at the entrance when they noticed that a security guard was stationed by the door. They assumed the guard would take care of her and left immediately afterward. The only problem was that this guard had strict orders from his boss. No one enters or exits the building without an ID or a key card. Sasha had lost both of these that night and was left helpless outside of her apartment. While it seems that the guard likely recognized Sasha, he had to follow orders, meaning Sasha was locked out of the building. Luckily for her, she managed to get a quick break later that night when a man entered the building with his key card and Sasha snuck in behind him. When police began digging deeper into her murder, they initially suspected that the man who she had snuck in with that evening may have had something to do with her death. They were able to quickly rule the man out after he provided his DNA to investigators. He revealed that Sasha was incredibly drunk that night, but he didn't think that she'd have any trouble getting home, so he didn't pay her much mind. But from here, police began to uncover some chilling details about the night of the murder. One of Sasha's upstairs neighbors reported seeing Sasha that evening. The neighbor said that they'd noticed Sasha was being followed by the on-duty security guard. The neighbor felt like the guard was being a bit suspicious, but it was the guard's job to make sure that all the residents were safe, so he assumed most likely that he was just making sure that she made it into her apartment safely. When the guard, Stephen Duxbury, spoke with police later on, he admitted that he had seen Sasha inside the building that night, but that he last had contact with her when he noticed her fumbling with her door code outside of her condo's entrance. But investigators soon learned there was far more to this story than they could have imagined. After a few days passed, police managed to gain access to the security footage from the evening of the crime. The footage clearly showed that the story Stephen had shared with police was false. The footage from 1.46 a.m. shows Sasha spending her last few moments wandering around the exterior floors of the condo complex. For more than 40 minutes, Stephen followed Sasha around the building and at times walked directly beside her. Now, just to be clear, if Stephen had been worried about Sasha, then this wouldn't have been unusual behavior. If he was truly a good security guard, he would have followed her around to make sure that she made it home safely, or that she didn't get into trouble while roaming around the building, which she was free to do. However, Stephen used his position as a security guard to take advantage of Sasha, following her around until he found the perfect moment to strike, like a hidden snake in a garden. The only problem with the security footage that officers had reviewed is that the main common area hallways are not covered by CCTV. This was done to help protect the privacy of residents, and Stephen knew this. He knew that whatever he did, it needed to be done in the hallways of the building. By 6.36 a.m. the next morning, Stephen is seen leaving the building while carrying trash bags out to his car. A pretty odd thing to do. The building manager later told investigators that it's not a security guard's job to handle trash, and this was something Stephen had never done before or since. This was also contradictory to what Stephen had told police, claiming that he had left the condo by 6 a.m. that morning. When police reviewed the footage again and took a closer look at the trash bags, they were able to confirm that they were the same style, color, and brand as the bags that Sasha had in her apartment. Now, I'll admit this evidence was pretty circumstantial if you ask me, but police somehow managed to use this evidence to convince a judge to provide them with a search warrant for Stephen's apartment, as well as his computer and his cell phone. The digital and physical evidence that detectives were able to track down was highly suspicious, to put it lightly. Police were able to find out that at 5 a.m. on October 17th, the same morning as the murder, 
Stephen used his phone to search for methods of overriding a quick-set digital deadbolt, the same model that was installed on Sasha's front door. Worse yet, this search came during the 90-minute gap in time that Stephen was absent from the building's security cameras. Soon after this discovery, there was undeniable proof that was uncovered. The fingerprint search had come back from the toilet seat in Sasha's apartment. The prints were a match to Stephen Duxbury. The DNA analysis also came back soon after, with the DNA found on Sasha's body being definitively linked to Stephen. His shoe print was also matched to the one found in Sasha's restroom. But things got even worse for Stephen. He agreed to take a polygraph test, and all of his responses regarding his whereabouts and Sasha that night were estimated to be lies, especially the portions of the test when Stephen was asked if he had ever entered Sasha's apartment at any point in his life. On October 30th, about two weeks after Sasha's murder, Stephen was arrested and charged for the crime. After being on trial for just six days, Stephen was found guilty of all charges and given two life sentences in prison with an additional 15 years for breaking and entering. Needless to say, Stephen will never see the light of day again. As it would turn out, the man who Sasha trusted most to protect her turned out to be nothing more than a heartless predator. The only mystery that remains in this case is that officers still have no idea how Stephen managed to get into Sasha's apartment without leaving behind any signs of forced entry. It's assumed that he must have found something online that allowed him to hack into Sasha's digital door lock, but we don't know for sure, and the lock didn't appear to have been tampered with in any way. If this is truly what happened, then this information needs to be made public so that lock manufacturers can correct this defect and people can change their locks. Because if you ask me, every tenant in the Uptown Place condominiums is still at serious risk. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of True Crime Stories. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're loving the channel and want to support it, the best way you can do that is by leaving a comment below. It lets YouTube know that you like these videos and that people with a similar interest might like them as well. If you'd like to pitch in financially, you can hit that blue join button below the video or support my work on Patreon. Also, remember to check out Aura for your free two-week trial of a whole life security suite. The link will be in the description below. But with that, my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.